Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update on Ukraine. And yes, from now on I will not say update from Ukraine because I left my country. More about it at the end of the video. Now let's speak about the military map. We have some sort of the activity of from the enemy side in the Bakhmut direction. However, it's not very significant. They take some ground. They took it recently. So this was a couple of days ago and today it's like that. So from a Darivka they moved quite a little bit forward and they pushed towards the natural obstacles as lakes over there. And they didn't take any kind of villages, but their idea from what I can see is to bypass the Bahmut and take it from the south. There were no any more updates about the military map and now let's go to the recent news and events. So the main news for today that Russia fired their cruise missiles and modern type of the drones uh, they call Lancet. As you can see Russia doesn't use Shahid drones any longer, at least for the recent attack they use mostly cruise missiles, they fired around 70 on our land and 51 of those rockets were shot by our air defense systems, however 19 hit critical infrastructural objects and as a result it was a big blackout in Ukraine. And not only in Ukraine, partially it touched Moldova because electricity to Moldova mostly comes from Ukrainian power lines. And today Russia was officially recognized by European Parliament as a tourist sponsor country. And immediately after that event they just prove who they are. Unfortunately because of the recent attack 10 people, Ukrainian citizens, lost their lives. Russian army doesn't have success on the front lines and that is why they start to fight with civilians. And believe me, then you don't have electricity, water, gas and internet, your life just becomes hell. Even though the people of Ukraine are suffering, still we are not going to accept the Russian peace to take Ukraine. So my friends, I drove around 800 miles today. I'm dead tired. This graph shows the internet access drop, so compared to the 15th of November, then it was the massive attack of the Russian rockets. They fired around 100 rockets, but still today they fired 70, and with this big drop, this drop is because of the loss of the power lines. Great news about the prisoners of war exchange, so today 36 Ukrainian warriors returned to Ukraine. Britain sends uh, some of the helicopters to Ukraine, those are Sea Kings rescue helicopters that will be used to rescue our soldiers from the front lines. Remember the case with Mariupol, then our helicopters, our pilots who flown Mi-8 helicopters did fantastic job, they are heroes evacuating the wounded soldiers from that place and some of the helicopters unfortunately were lost together with the crew. So those are the results of today's massive Russian rocket attack, just a random residential building was severely damaged, cars were destroyed and some of the people just were wounded or lost their lives there. But recently we started to get reports that our maintenance guys repaired most of the infrastructure that is used to supply electrical power to the people. But still there are some critical regions as Kyiv city itself, so it's now power just for 20%. United States agreed to help Ukraine more, so they will provide NASAMS and HIMARS ammunition, also many machine guns, high precision artillery shells and many more mortars. So how Russia is doing their rocket attacks? Basically they fly their Tupolev 95 strategic bombers that are equipped with cruise missiles and they fire them from the Caspian Sea. So for the rocket it takes some time to reach Ukrainian territory and also at the same time they launch their cruise missiles from the ships. And sometimes they may fire missiles also from the Belarusian territory. Belarusia is actually a Russian base for the hypersonic weapon Kinjal rockets. The Institute of the War Researchers say that Russia may attack their own city, Belgorod, and accuse Ukraine for doing so. They want to raise the awareness from the Russian society and confirmation for the Putin's action. So if Ukraine attacks Russian territory, 
Russia should fight. Because now there are more and more voices in Russian society who tell that it's better to give up this war, give Ukraine their territory, maybe keeping Crimea. But for Ukrainians, obviously, we're gonna fight and take Crimea back. Also, European Union may include the private Wagner army as a terrorist one, and Prigozhin, the leader of that army, sent this uh, big hammer to European parliamentary, one of those, and it says like private military army Wagner, some of their symbols, and honestly I don't want to remind you why this big hammer is so popular nowadays in Wagner army. So just for you to understand the severity of Ukrainian electrical crisis, today all of the Ukrainian nuclear power plants lost the connection with the power lines and all of the coal power plants were damaged throughout the recent Russian attacks. Right guys, and few of the words why I've decided to leave my country, Ukraine. First of all, safety. Yes, for civilians, it's not safe to be in Ukraine, especially to live in a place where I used to live because my building was very close to the military base. Very close, I mean 50 up to 100 meters. And after watching the Shahid drones flying and how our air defense working with your own eyes, my friends, it's really frightening. I'm not a military guy, that is why for me it's quite unusual and I do not live alone, I have family, I have daughter that is why i should provide safety for them so it was reason number one reason number two that i need to provide content for you i need to upload my videos regularly because of the electrical problems internet problems i didn't have that opportunity and yes even with starlink because i do not live in a private house i live in apartments and the signal for starlink is very weak and i don't have a generator it's forbidden to use them in apartments so that is why i use the accumulator battery that is very limited and sometimes you don't have opportunity even to charge it reason number three i need to continue my life as an airline pilot in ukraine commercial airplanes are not flying for commercial airline pilots without the military experience it's impossible to join the army to fly on the fighter jets and transport military airplanes even unmanned air vehicles so i cannot do it because i am in luck of the military experience at some point of my life i got some of the health problems that is why I was not allowed to join military. As you know, it's kind of obligatory for men in Ukraine to join it. And then this war just have been started. I went to the military branch and they say they don't need guys like me without military experience. And also they look at my papers for my health and they say, even though it was kind of long time ago, they don't need me right now. I will not tell you the country where I'm right now, but tomorrow I'll be in another country and I haven't decided where to stay, honestly. I need some career perspectives and I need to pass for some kind of the license because Ukrainian license is the standard IKEA and if you want to fly in Europe, you need to have European license. If you want to fly in the United States, you need to have the FAA license, the same for Australia and other countries. For now, I just want to focus on my channel and pass the exams for the license and it may take like half a year. For America it's way more easier compared to European one. Less exams and less bureaucracy and still I don't know where to move honestly my friends. So I'm now in a safe place and going to concentrate on my YouTube channel and also my career goals. And the reason number four why I moved from Ukraine is because my daughter needs education good education because of that blackout so uh, even online studying in ukraine went to hell if you have electricity you have online classes if you don't have you don't have any kind of classes and going to school is very dangerous because russia may fire their rockets to it so mostly in kiev area it's 
the online starting. So it was not just my sole decision. The main thing for it is to give prospects for the young generation, for my daughter, for her to have a normal life with mother, father in some kind of the country where she will have good education in Ukraine, my friends. It's not possible. I love my country and I will continue to help Ukrainian people even from the distance. Uh, I just want to tell you that because of the Russia, the young generation doesn't have perspectives in Ukraine for some time. I hope for the next year and after it, after the war is over, everything will be booming. Ukrainian economy will go up. But time goes fast and it's better to act right now. Obviously, my haters would love to hear that news that I left my country. Well, haters, just for you to know, I'll do even more from abroad for my country, for our army to win this war against Russian Federation. And you know what? My friends will help me with that. My friends who watch my videos. I'm going to keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. My friends, if you want to support this channel, just press the like button. If you want to support me financially, there are some of the links in the video description how you can do it. You may support me on Patreon, PayPal or Donatello, whichever is more convenient for you. With your help, I'm OK to live even in other countries. Many thanks for you, my friends. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.